Well, I've heard it said you cannot go home anymore. But one day I was in the Stop and Shop supermarket in West Hartford, Connecticut, and I saw, I found, the exact Volkswagen bus that we had as a family back in 1965. The Volkswagen bus came in a few different iterations in 1965, and one of them was the standard issue. Now, we got the standard issue. Now, why did we do that? Uh, well, I think it's because my father was um, a very frugal man, and he just figured if he's going to get himself something, he's going to get, you know, the least possible. Uh, figuring that, kind of like myself, that, you know, you pay the base price and you get 95% of the car. You spend so much in options and you really don't do much. And most of these vans had windows all the way in the back, or many of them, windows on the top, and they were kind of uh, decked out. This car, I had never seen before. As a matter of fact, I almost had to convince myself to buy it because you know, it, it didn't hit me until basically when I got home. If I had missed this, I might have never found it again. I could have gone out later that day and it might have been gone. But this Volkswagen bus we bought in 1965 out of Whaley Volkswagen in New Haven, Connecticut. I put a Mad Magazine <laughs> sticker right about here uh, that said, don't be impressed, it's rented. And uh, my father didn't like that. He, My father wasn't the type that beat me, but... You know, it, everybody gets a new car, and they want it to stay new as long as possible. I still think that's funny. But we kept the car for a while. My parents divorced in, oh, 1967, they separated. 68, the, uh, the issue was settled. And my mother, my father kept the car for a while. My mother didn't drive at first. And then my mother drove, and my father gave her the car, the VW bus. And... Come 1972, when I started working at Stop and Shop in Orange, Connecticut, uh, my mother was still alive then, but um, I became the user, on some occasions, of the VW bus. Matter of fact, by the time 1974 came around, that was uh, sort of my ride, but I was so embarrassed of this car. You know, all my friends, their families had, uh, well, next door neighbor, the Caprios in Hamden, had a 1965 yellow Pontiac Bonneville, or purple maybe, and I'm thinking, why did they go American? And, you know, we go, you know, more or less communist. My father fought the Germans in, in the 40s, and he buys their car in the 60s. I don't know where his head was at, but it wasn't a bad thing, and when you come right down to it, it was ahead of the times. We had a mechanic named Otto from Germany, and he would keep the car running for my mother. They didn't build them so sturdy or steady as they do now, and you know, cars, after your car was a few years old, I mean, it was considered old. By 1973, 74, when I was driving this Volkswagen bus, I was absolutely, um, like I say, embarrassed. It was extremely slow. It was extremely out of style. But uh, you never appreciate what you have until it's gone, right? I mean, there was, uh, you know, if I had to do it again, I'd still rather have the Bonneville. But, you know, this is kind of... Um, what do they say? It's iconic. Now, that's a word that is overused, and it doesn't even mean anything to me. Iconic. I mean, this was legendary, I guess, would be my word. You know, it's a, it's a car that evokes the 60s, and it wasn't really one that you would, you know, put flower power stickers on. It was, it was too, it was too um, conservative. Red on the bottom, white on the top, and split windshield. I mean, face it, how many cars had split windshields? Uh, one of my wipers broke once, and I tied a string to the one that worked, and it had pulled the other one. Of course, that wasn't a solution. It wasn't meant to do that. The engine was in the rear, uh, inspired the Corvair. The engine in the rear, inspired the Corvair. So now you hear it from me. Anyway, anyway, th th this car was, was the original car, along with the Honda Civic, which I eventually owned. In, in between was a Vega. Boy, I'll tell you, I've had some cars that you really don't want to you know, make a big deal out of. But um, this car is going home, you know. I mean, I have dreams about this car sometimes that I'm still, you know, still uh, still driving, still riding it around. I suppose I could buy a 65 VW bus, but I could never get back to 1965. I could never get back to, 
you know, where I once belonged. I mean, I'm in New Haven again. I mean, that's for sure. But, um, you know, even in New Haven, I walk around and it's like the new New Haven. The uh, nostalgia of it, the ghosts are slowly um, not making themselves felt so much as they did. But um, I found this yesterday in my back collection of cars. And I, I really am glad I found it. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful piece of work. Now, am I getting teary-eyed? Am I getting cloudy-eyed? No, it's just the focus here on the, um, on the, uh, the camera. I, I don't use an iPhone. Uh, you know, one day it hit me. I could either buy a very expensive iPhone or a very inexpensive, um, what do they call this? A non-iPhone, you know, the Android uh, Galaxy type of thing. And, you know, Galaxy is the name of a car. So, I mean, iPhone isn't the name of a car. So I, I went with the Galaxy. But the key is that this Volkswagen bus brings me right back. I mean, even the interior is the interior that we drove. Look at that. The pizza dish steering wheel that lies flat. The, um, you know, the very basic front seats. The uh, third seat came out, and sometimes we take the second seat out just for fun. And, you know, this car, this car did the job. My mother drove it. My father drove it. I don't, I don't think my sister ever drove it, but it was literally the family car. So the best decision, not best decision, it was the decision. We got a new car, and we got a car that was the Volkswagen bus. Now... What I could say is that we've got some cars waiting in the wings here. Um, again, blurry picture, but you can see there is a uh, uh, Mitsubishi Lancer and there's a Kia Stinger, and they'll be featured in another upcoming video. I, uh, I have my coffee here. It's the morning time. And, you know, I'd take you for a ride in this. That's what I would do. I would take you for a ride in this VW. Look at this. We're gaining focus again. Uh, maybe I should have more coffee, but we're we're... I take you for a ride, but this car is so painfully slow that uh, it would remind me of the time when I took Shelly Radin, this beautiful Jewess I worked with, at Stop and Shop in Orange. I took her home. I mean, if I only knew what to do, I would. I would have just. I just loved that woman. Matter of fact, uh, she married a guy, and she might still be married to him. I have no idea. It's hard to catch up with people. I, I looked her up in line, but she'd be a 65-year-old lady now. She wouldn't be old Shelly who was 16. Man, you live long enough, you're happy, you're ecstatic to be alive, but the, the people that were so sexy, the women that were so sexy to you, are now old birds. I mean, I haven't seen Shelly, but um, I would have to figure that uh, that would be the go-to guess. So, um, you know, this is it, a Volkswagen bus. What was your first car? I mean, all in all, I'd give this car five stars. I mean, anybody could have had a Pontiac Bonneville. I mean, the Jews in the, on the street, we had Volkswagens. Why would we do that? Were we self-hating, self-defacing Jews? I mean, they put us in concentration camps. They tried to exterminate the race. Twenty years later, the same people that fought the Nazis flocked to their car. It was actually a bit of liberal anti-Americanism, basically. They tried not to be status people. They tried to be intellectuals but I love my family I love my neighbors and um, you know it, it, it's a five-star upbringing anyway that's it the Volkswagen bus 1965 a classic I was there we owned it we sold it in about 1974 see you next time friends